Welcome back to another GeekWatt video and today I'm taking over the best $200 gaming PC build for the month of October and November 2015. This build is easily capable of smashing your favourite titles such as CSGO, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Minecraft and some of the older games uh, so from Valve uh, or from other providers Origin etc etc uh, um, at 720 and 1080p 30 to 60 FPS. This isn't going to be smashing the latest AAA titles at 1080p 60 FPS, it is only $200 and if you do want something with a bit more performance and a bit more value for money then go and look at my 350 to 500 dollar build and they will certainly satisfy your needs but for 200 dollars this really is the best you can get so without any further ado let's get straight into it uh, for budget systems apus are the way to go as opposed to putting a really crap cpu and a really crap gpu and getting really crap performance this is the amd a6 7400k amd really are the king of apus and this a6 7400k chip is no exception it's overclockable but comes out of the box at three and a half gigahertz which is a really healthy clock speed out of the box. It's only a dual core CPU, not a quad core CPU, making it uh, making games like GTA really quite a struggle or pretty much impossible on this build. But for $200, you aren't going to be playing GTA 5, especially not on this build. Uh, it's only a dual core CPU, but games such as CSGO and some of the older titles, the so games that are sort of more than a year old, are all completely fine uh, with dual core CPUs. It's only the games that have come out very recently or only the very intensive games that have come out recently that now start to require a quad core CPU. This build really is, uh, this CPU for this build is a great option for $59. The motherboard I've gone for is the cheapest motherboard I could find with all the functionality needed, and that's because motherboards don't directly affect performance. It's the ASUS uh, A68HM-K, it's a Micro ATX motherboard uh, with an FM2 Plus socket to sit the um, FM2 Plus CPU. It's got USB 3, space for graphics card and two RAM DIMM slots, uh, which really does give you all the functionality you need. Micro ATX isn't the biggest motherboard form factor and it isn't the smallest motherboard form factor, it provides sort of the best of both worlds. Uh, got compact size but with all the features you need so you're not, you're not, you're not paying a premium for small and you're not paying a premium for big, really does give the best value in this case. For RAM, I went for some Kingston Fu HyperX Fury White. Uh, you can also get this in blue, black or red depending on uh, either your colour preference, what you think will go best with this build, or even what is cheapest at the time, uh, normally the metric I use. Kingston HyperX Fury RAM is extremely reliable, I've used it several times in several builds and it never once has it let me down, um, so I don't see why it should be the same for you. Kingston got great customer service, so if you do have any issues, do drop them an email and they'll be sure to sort you out. Now, if you didn't know, if you haven't watched my What is VRAM video, linked in the card section right now, uh, which you can go and watch after this video if you do desire, uh, graphics cards have their own board, uh, their own onboard memory. It's very, very fast memory, hence why it's often smaller than the system, ma uh, system, RAM, uh, use, uh, system RAM allowance, shall we say. Uh, but because it's an APU, because it combines the graphics and the CPU into one chip, it doesn't have that. It doesn't have its own onboard memory because it's simply just too small. So that is why I've gone for some faster memory. So it's a, a DDR3-1866 megahertz memory uh, kit as opposed to going for something like a DDR3-1333 or 1600 megahertz kit. Just boost performance for the APU. I went for one 4GB DIMM purely because um, you've got you've got two DIMM slots on that board and another 4GB DIMM will be really beneficial to performance uh, as it allows for twice the bandwidth in dual channel mode uh, with the APU. So definitely worthy the upgrade later on down the line but for the moment 4 gigs should serve you fine. For storage I went for a Western Digital Caviar Blue. Uh, these are these are the godsend of hard drives, they're extremely reliable. Uh, obviously you are, you are prone to data loss on hard drives but for two, three, even four, five years I've been using these uh, WD Blues and never had a single one fail on me. It's a 500 gigabyte hard drive which gives you the same amount of storage that you'll get in something like an Xbox One or a PS4, so a next gen console. And um, whilst 500 gigabytes isn't a load, uh, for the games that will be played on this system, so slightly less intense games and not the AAA titles, uh, those games do tend to be much smaller in size. And it is a PC for God's sake, you can upgrade it later on down the line, you can add another hard drive in if you wish, but for now, 500 gigabytes should be more than enough. For the case, I went for a logistics. I can't even say the name. That's how bad this. Uh, that's how bad the brand name is. It's the CS sixty eight oh one BK. It's a Micro ATX mini tower case with a three hundred and fifty watt power supply built in, so you don't you don't need to buy a separate one. There can be quite a bit of controversy around inbuilt power supplies in cases. But this has got very good new egg uh, egg ratings, uh, which does 
lead me to the impression that it is, a, it is more than reliable. Obviously, you can contact them if there's a problem, or you can just replace the power supply later on down the line if you wish. But for now, this is a really solid case. It's a Micro ATX mini tower, which means it's really small, so it'll fit in any sort of home or office environment. But it's more than compatible with all of the uh, uh, all of the other components that we've chosen. And that is it for this video. If you found this build helpful, all the links will be in the description below that you need to know. And please do subscribe to check out some of the other great GeekerWatt content. Remember to like this video, get it pushed up in the ratings, get more people to see this video, and help me achieve my dream of a great tech channel. And we'll see you in the next GeekerWatt video.